Welcome back to another episode of Denmark 101. You may notice that the backdrop has changed. That is because I did a very, very Danish thing. And instead of sticking around December for Christmas, I took off to Southeast Asia. So this Denmark 101 comes to you from a hotel room in Southern Vietnam. But I will be back, flying back in time for New Year's Eve in Copenhagen because I absolutely love it. So I want to talk to you a little bit about it. Now, the Danes have a very special relationship with their royals. They, they love them, uh, most Danes anyway. Um, and it's very understandable. The, Dan the Danish royals have done a, a wonderful job. They fill a very special role, um, but that's for another video. So where it becomes interesting is for this, for New Year's, is that the queen gives an annual speech. And now the Queen's speech is broadcast across TV. It's very similar to the State of the Union address that would be uh, given by a US president. And it, it talks about the year in review, it talks about where the country's going, what the country has faced, all those different factors. Uh, and the Queen has been on the throne for a long, long time, so she's been giving these for, oh, I don't know, decades. It, uh, so it's, it's a very cool tradition. Um, and everybody gets together, they sit on the couch in the living room, wherever it is, and they watch the Queen's speech. For the most part, most people are very respectful, very quiet while this is happening. Now, one other thing to understand is that Chris or New Year's Eve parties in uh, uh, Denmark, uh, you typically dress up. Uh, it's not uncommon to have people in full suits or uh, cummerbunds or um, you know tuxedo. Like it, it, it very much depends on the party and the context. But you have a lot of people that that really take it as an opportunity to. Uh, to dress up, so a lot of nice dresses as well, of course. Uh, so that's similar to a lot of other places, but uh, I feel like it's it's a little bit more consistent and a little bit more thorough uh, in Denmark. Uh, and then you get together and, and you do small parties, uh, so lovely small dinner parties. So you'll come over, usually um, late afternoon, you'll get together, you'll watch the Queen's speech together, then uh, perhaps you'll eat a beautifully decorated table uh, with, with friends and socialize and have some drinks. Um, and then around, I think it's 1130, uh, the next big tradition comes up and that is a dinner party for one. Not meaning that you go sit by yourself, but rather meaning that there is this great old special from 1953, 68, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, it was done as a British comedy skit, but it aired in West Berlin. Somehow it became popular in Denmark. It's an old black and white. And, uh, and now it's an annual tradition that this that this special airs uh, right in the lead up, in the build up, right before midnight, and everybody watches it. And it's such a great skit. I would love to see this this adopted across the world because it it, it is it's really cute. Uh, and there's a lot of different variations on how people consume it. Some do it as a drinking game. Some do it as uh, just something you watch. Um, but the the story and the premise, and you can find it elsewhere on YouTube is uh, this old Baroness has unfortunately lost all of her friends that she would celebrate with. And so uh, undeterred, this feisty old Baroness is continuing to hold her dinner party. And the poor butler, who is also um, getting along in age, is responsible for basically filling in for all of her drinking companions and dinner party companions. And it's in this lovely old room and uh, the, the butler, he's very good and very diligent about filling everybody's glass and then he takes a drink or he misses or he waters uh, drinks out of the boss or trips over this, uh, this lion rug. Is it a bear rug? I think it's a lion rug. Um, so all of these different things, um, you know, they, the, over the years, the, the Danes have honed in on and, and those become something, you know, one, they're, they're funny parts of the skit, but also at, at other points, you know, they can be a drinking game or something like that. Long story short, by the end of the night, the poor butler is extremely intoxicated and struggling to fill in for the five dinner guests that he's been covering for. Typically that ends and then you have a countdown, but where in the US there's pressure to find a kiss and you get that dramatic kiss. Uh, or in Spain uh, and other areas, you have your, your, your 12 grapes and you stuff them all in your mouth all at once. Um, in Denmark, it's a little bit different. You're jumping into the new year. So you kick off your shoes and then you have to find a chair, a sofa, anything like that. Uh, and then you hop up on it and then you have the countdown and then everybody jumps off and jumps into the new year. Of course, then you can go chase down and kiss if you feel inclined. Or, um, but then uh, a lot of uh, just uh, just hugs and, and high spirits and uh, 
it, it, it's a really, really cool way to do it. Uh, at that point, typically the cake comes out, uh, and I think this is a, a fairly <clears throat> traditional um, cake, uh, but uh, I know uh, my Danish friends always really do a beautiful job with a, a multi-ring, uh, multi multi-layer uh, marzipan cake, and it, it just looks like a kind of a, a narrowing beehive. Uh, and it's uh, very sweet and then drizzled chocolate on it and then um, uh, one friend in particular typically writes out happy new year's on top and has some sparklers on it and you light those on fire and it comes out and it's just this really really cool thing and then you eat the layer cake after new year's uh, so that's that's a fantastic tradition of course you have the champagne and then the Danes love their fireworks and uh, it's it, it, for me coming from Arizona where, where fireworks are super regulated it, it, it's pretty amazing because you go down and um, everybody then goes and spills into the streets. And there's not one city you're putting on a, a, a concentrated show. Basically, Danes everywhere, all over the city, have all gone out and they've bought a truckload of fairly expensive, really colorful fireworks. And uh, almost all the Danes buy glasses, <clears throat> safety goggles. And you all go down in the street, usually with a bottle or a couple bottles of champagne, all dressed up to the nines, and just start launching off fireworks or just watching the fireworks show. And that doesn't last for five minutes. It doesn't last for 10 minutes. It's really intense for at least 30 minutes as all the different dinner parties finish up and get their butts downstairs to launch stuff. But it really goes on for almost an hour. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. So the one thing that you don't do if you're in, in Copenhagen, for example, is go down to Radhusplas and to the city square because that, even though that there are people that concentrate there, that's actually quite dangerous um, just because there's so many people launching so many fireworks in a completely disorganized sort of way. And realistically, uh, even, even when I was out in Vangel, uh, in, in one of the suburbs, um, you would just look out across the skyline and you just had fireworks all across the city. So it's, uh, it's a very cool, incredible experience. And then from there, typically you either go out to people hosting parties, crash parties, uh, a bar, a club, whatever it might be, and then it's kind of your traditional New Year's Eve celebration uh, like you would find in the rest of the world. So that is New Year's Eve in Denmark, at least the traditions that I've run into and that I can recall. Uh, I'm sure that there are some regional ones, I'm sure that there are some that I've missed, so I invite uh, all Danes to discuss and to share in a comment. As always, please share these videos. Uh, I love your subscription, please subscribe, uh, love your likes. Uh, and your comments, questions, feedback, it's all fantastic. So thank you for tuning in to Denmark 101, and uh, I might do one or two more while I'm down here on the road before I get back to Copenhagen for New Year's.